Welcome to the Greg Bennett Show. I'm your host, Greg Bennett. And this is part two of the special edition with Jan Fadino. And in part two, we really get a glimpse of the life behind the athlete. Jan discusses self-doubt and what it's like to always have a target on his back. And he describes what his talent truly is and, and what a typical day is really looks like. Jan discusses his new business adventure with his wife, Emma, the La Comuna Boutique Residence Cafe and Corner Store in his wonderful town of Girona, Spain. He discusses his incredible sponsors and how he and his manager, Felix, manage all the commitments. And we end this episode with some really fun, quick-fire questions. Thanks, everyone, for listening and sharing the show. And thank you for the support on my Patreon page and the support of the, the show's sponsors, Athletic Greens, Hyper Ice, and Form Swim Goggles. I hope you enjoy part two with Jan Fredino as much as I did. And remember, success comes to those who enjoy just one moment longer. Now, let's get back to Jan. I want to shift here a little bit. Well, kind of shift a little bit, but most people never have the feeling of being the best at anything, right? Uh, you, you, you are, you know, the best at what you do. And, and when we last spoke on the show, there was something that really jumped out at me. You, you said you described self-doubt as, as a fuel, as a motivator. You said, here, here's the quote, I'm going to read it to you. You said, self-doubt is what continues to fuel me now, to never feel safe with what I've done. It keeps me running like a hamster that keeps running in an attempt to find new solutions and best possible way forward. And why this jumped out of me is just because we always think the greatest are kind of 100% confident all the time, right? You know, but, you know, this past 17 months since you won Kona, I'm just curious, how were you able to sort of manage that self-doubt over such a long period of time? Um, you, you know, it's, it's a very uh, concise self-doubt. It's a very um, sort of bound to one area in life self-doubt. Um, of course, these days I'm, I'm happy enough and, and know enough that I don't really um, doubt everything uh, about myself, but I doubt whether I have the ability to get to the top and and <clears throat> and that kind of is something that wasn't required for a long long time and mm -hmm. the last 17 months were actually the first time that I was able to enjoy one of my titles of, of all the titles mm -hmm. I've ever won mm -hmm. it was the mm -hmm. first time that I could go out on a two or three hour ride with a bunch of mates and just be just be riding for the sake of riding no intervals no nothing just you know, normally you're always chasing and you're chasing up appointments and you're going to photo shoots and you've got interviews and you've got stuff to do. Whereas now it was just simply a time to actually be able to enjoy. And, and you know, that was definitely one of the positives of, of this whole pandemic was just being able to, to slow down, get out of the hamster wheel. And <laughs> quite frankly, because of the race that I last had, you know, I was like, if that was, if, if the world stops competing, if we won't race for another five years or, or, or ever, mm. you, know, well, you, you can't go out on more of a high. A quick mini break. I really want to encourage you to do something special for yourself and sign up to Athletic Greens and get a free year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase by visiting athleticgreens.com forward slash Greg. Again, that's athleticgreens.com forward slash Greg. I'm loving the new Hypervolt Go percussion massage device from Hyperice. It's powerful, quiet, lightweight, and TSA approved so I can use it while I travel. Check out the Hypervolt Go and all the other incredible Hyperice gear at hyperice.com and use code GREG10 for a 10% discount. That's hyperice.com. If you want to see all your key metrics like pace, distance, stroke rate, and heart rate while you swim, you need the Form Smart Swim Goggles. Go to formswim.com forward slash Greg. That's formswim.com forward slash Greg and get $15 off. Or you can use code Greg15 at checkout. You know, you came out of that 2019 race that you're referring to, Kona Ironman 751. And, you know, I had Craig Alexander on the show uh, and we were talking about that performance. He's like, 
it's not just the time that he did. It's the fact that he won by eight minutes. It's like it's the time difference. You know, that was his big thing, the, 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 just how far you – you won that race and we were debating whether it was eight minutes, whatever, eight minutes, 50 or whatever. And, <laughs> and, but it was, it was an incredible race. And, and I think you have that champion mindset where you're able to become present and rather than complaining or, you know, it's, it's saying, look, it wasn't, it wasn't a perfect year last year. I love to race, but these are the circumstances we're under. So I'm going to embrace them and make the most of them. Um, and I, I think that's that's huge. But how did it feel? I mean, I, Lionel Sanders, we've brought him up a fair bit and, and I guess he's quite, he's the most vocal person out there in terms of saying he wants to beat Jan Fadino. And I'm like, well, everybody should want to beat Jan Fadino because he's the number one guy in the world. So it's kind of, I don't know if it needs to be said. So anyway, but how does it feel to be the guy that has the, the target on his back all the time? Um, it feels somehow natural because I always put a target on my own back and it's, it's just the expectation that I have of myself in terms of wanting to be the very best I can be. And, mm. and of course it's, it's great to have people chasing you. And then, you know, you think about it in a race like Miami, um, is, is great, but things go, go back to normality pretty quick. Whereas for them, it wouldn't go back to normality if, if you know, the, if, if, if you would have won the race, it would have been something that's, that's there. And that of, of course that adds pressure. But again, I believe that pressure just fuels me of having that, um, yeah, of having that reputation and having that opportunity because, you know, you have to work damn hard and for a very long time <laughs> in order for, for people to actually, focus on you you know <laughs> i hope well, he doesn't I, have a photo of me in his gym anymore but I, I mean i love lionel for the fact that he just goes out and he just smashes himself oh, of he course. just goes out and smashes himself and wherever he pulls that motivation from i'm like that's great bring on more because we need more guys like that who just go out and literally have the intention of passing out of the finish line if they're not winning oh look i don't know if you've watched any of his YouTubes and things. They do a great job of their, their YouTube show. And um, I've really enjoyed watching a few of them, to be honest, because he he truly is very authentic and allows himself to be very vulnerable. Um, <clears throat> and and you do wish that he'd, you know, he's going to the swim and he's flogging himself and he's really trying to figure it out. And, and it has been kind of enjoyable to watch some of his, his YouTube guys. And, and, you know, he does have that old school mentality of, you know, beating the, the absolute crap out of himself. Um, which I'm kind of drawn to. Not, and that's not to say everybody should do that, by the way. It's Ray, probably not honestly, great. The way you beat yourself up when you went time, man, I don't think any of us have come close. <laughs> Look, I, I'm not saying I have all the answers, everybody. I'm just saying I appreciate what I see in Lionel sometimes. And, uh, you know, and that, that brings me to this next, next question I have for you. And it's not really, it's more of a statement. But, you know, I, I, so you were on this show. We, we had a conversation last June and, and – between then and now, I had your coach, Dan Lorang, on. And when I had him on, he said something very interesting. And I'm not quoting him here, by the way. It's just basically he said, look, when I started working with Jan, I was a little bit, I don't think underwhelmed is the right way, but your physiology didn't blow him away. You know, I think he was expecting Jan Fadino, 2008 Olympic gold medals, blah, 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 you know, has to be, just have some kind of freakishness about him. Um, but then that made me revisit a quote that you read out when you're on the show and that was from the Hungarian water polo player Tibor Benedict and I want to revisit that um so basically for people who don't don't know Tibor Benedict is is regarded as the best left-hand player in the world of water polo with three Olympic titles he won both European and world championships etc cetera, etc cetera. just incredible but the way he described himself he said and this is his quote that you shared with me I never had a particularly good ball sense I never played football basketball well i didn't throw particularly long shots with the ball and i throw even shorter today i'm not particularly strong or smart i don't swim too well and my water level is completely average <laughs> when he summed up the reason for his success he would say i always wanted it better and that's my talent what is it about you know this this quote that that really you know resonates with you um it, it really 
is a lot of, of what I see in myself. And it's funny because the guy who, who sent it to me, he was the head of the German sports funding for a while and he's moved on and we've stayed, we've stayed friends. And um, <clears throat> it was one of those things that was basically what he saw in me. And mm, I love when, that. I just, when, yeah. when Dan picked me up um, at the end of, it would have been the beginning of the 2013 season, so late 2012. I just come back from an injury, and uh, like rubbish is, doesn't even cut it in terms of what my what my numbers looked like. I mean, I remember the testing; it was just pathetic, um, and I never test well even these days. I don't, you know. And, and I remember going to like the orthopedic check, and all the people always telling me why I wouldn't be able to do this and my flexibility isn't great and you know your hip should be stronger and I don't know there was always always something um, that they were looking at in terms of the general check and and in terms of what's per kilo I'm, I'm certainly not amazing and that's really why it just came down like I just have this innate necessity to compete and be the best and I see it with with Nick, you know, when, when he beats me in a swim session, like these days I'm, I'm smart enough not to kill myself in one session just to have that one session in the bag because I know that tomorrow is another day. But I, it just infuriates me and it gives me this energy to just, oh, to just keep pushing, you know, and keep, keep surging on it. But it really, really, I, it comes like you would, you would normally say it's a, it's a dark side of me that comes out that I've really learned to channel and, and, and realize that anger is just such an incredible source of motivation, but also fuel. And that really is why I enjoy this quote so much because, you know, look at all the values. You, you even said it. I was the third fastest swimmer. I was the third fastest biker. And I was the third fastest runner. Didn't, didn't clean up any of them. You know, mm. but the overall result when it comes together, that well, then then that gets you a, a good performance. I'm not I'm not sure I said it like third, like it was in a bad way. By the way, <laughs> no, no, but yeah, I take yeah, it as a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> and already now, I mean, it's getting my time. I'm just, yeah, but I'm I want to talk about Yeah, screw you, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, how does it make you feel though when when, when somebody then says, you know, you. Jan Fredino, the greatest of all time. I know we touched on this last episode, but but what is the feeling you get? Is it is it pride or is it embarrassed or, or is it what what is that feeling? Oh, Greg, yeah, because none of us are ever going to have that. You know, none of us get that kind of a a statement. I I truly want to know how that feels. Um, to be honest, like I think about it and I look at the guys that, that are in that, that they talk about and that they you know I look at the debate and then there's always the Alan and Scott and 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 all this kind of debate and it's like it's it's super cool to have made it to be a part of the history of our sport mm. but it's something that quite frankly the discussion itself it it doesn't touch me it doesn't phase me because it's 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 completely subjective I would never ever look at myself as the greatest um, it, it seems like it seems like such a wanky thing to say, <laughs> and 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 man, I, I love the I love the fact that you just use the word wanky thing to say. By the way, because that's a very Australian saying. It's super so. Australian, but it, it, it's it's the way I like to look at it. In Australia, I think it's a yeah. very healthy way of looking at people that would otherwise be described as celebrities. You know, it's it's very yeah. natural. Like people go out. They go grab their coffee. They go for a run around the park, and it's just it's just normal people, and that's what people realize there more than in other places. That I'm just a regular guy. I've got mm. two kids. I've got a beautiful wife, and I love my life. That's all it is. And I'm 39 years old, and I still get to live my dream. That's really what it is, you know. Uh, half the thing of being called a legend just means you've been around long enough. <laughs> that, that's all it is <laughs> it just means you're old <laughs> really it does that's exactly what it is and yeah. and so the you know it, it's super it's it's cool to be in that discussion but really mm. emotionally it 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 doesn't phase me i really i enjoy when people say they got into the sport because of me or they 
push through a certain session because of they because of watching a race or something like that you know that kind of situation that that really makes me happy but um the whole goat discussion no. um is yeah it's it, it's more amusing than than anything else cuz i certainly am just a regular guy well it's funny you i i um three times a week i do a little bike run workout 35 minutes on the bike and about a 2 kilometer run off it jeez and and i got to tell you the amount of times that you, Alistair Brownlee, and Javier Gomez are trying to chase me down because I blew you all the way on the bike. <laughs> I visualize you every three times a week, mate, and he comes yarn for dinner, but I, I generally hold you off. Actually, I always hold you off. <laughs> <laughs> That's See, good. That's good. It's actually yeah. quite hard to do that in your mind. I oh, found. yeah. It took me I, a long oh, time I, to be able to do that. Oh, I love to play in my own head, mate. It's mm. fantastic up there. <laughs> now, you, is it exhausting to feel like the, the world is – always watching and i mean how do you turn off from that you mentioned last year was great because the world wasn't watching for a bit but now the world's sort of coming back a little bit and what are you doing to sort of ground yourself away from the intensity of high performance sport um you know what i i had a pretty smart move in hindsight i feel to not share any or much of my private life um, mm. it genuinely, like you look at my social media, there's, there's nothing about my private life. And that has been, uh, especially of late, a key to actually being able to enjoy it to the fullest. You know, it really is something where I look at, you know, having time with my kids and just being able to jo- to enjoy it and to learn also as a father, you know, because people generally expect e- excellence of you in every field. Um, when, when you're good at something, um, but of course we all learn, and and that's something that I really really enjoyed and really taken up, and it's also something that's really consuming. But I have to say that, um, especially the last few months, I've just been super busy opening a cafe, opening a little hotel, um, having a few other projects on the side. That um, you know, it really is something that. I'm, I mean, I live in Spain, five o'clock in the morning is about the weirdest time to go training, but it's it's my time um, simply because that's when I've got time at the moment. And it really forces you to switch on whenever you're doing what you're doing and switch off straight away afterwards because afterwards I've got to go and get breakfast ready. I've got to go take the kids to school. And then uh, from school, I go straight to the track because it's right near the school, um, do my workout come home, you know, rest for a little bit, have a little snack, go to the pool. Um, it just, you know, it, it becomes this routine of, of, um, of really being on and off various times in the day. But you really realize that when something is limited, which in my case is time, it becomes very precious and therefore you don't waste it. You don't, you know, faff around doing, doing things that, uh, unproductive or um, unserving to, you know, mm. getting well, I, done. I, I even love the fact that, you know, organizing this conversation. So, <clears throat> you know, we, <laughs> we, we spoke and you said, no, look, Thursdays is my family day. So, no, I'm not doing that. And then, you know, Friday, you know, I get this 15 minutes late. Ah, oh, hello, Greg. <laughs> I've got the kids cooking dinner. It sounded like it sounded like the pots were burning. The kids were running around. Emma was at yoga. So you had, and it was like, okay, he's a normal guy, a normal dad doing the best he can. <laughs> and it's like, I can't do the episode right now and let's shift it. And I personally, I think that's really great. You know, and on that, what do you, what do, you do on a family day? When you call it a family day, what do you guys do? What would be a typical family day? Uh, well, it's um, it's about five k to to our local school where or to the school that the kids go to. So I picked them up on the bike. Um, I, I sort of tie Luca's bike to the back of my mountain bike, and we ride from there um, through town. We've got a little snack, go to the pool, do a little swim, and um, yeah, just kind of try and be active, you know. And it, it, it's the thing is, as an athlete, you generally live such a docile life that. It mm. really, the few days that you have, which for me are, are, are two days in the week when I've got a little bit more time, um, they, they become precious because I realize that I live an active life, but, you know, my son's not going to learn to ride a bike 
just by watching me. And my daughter's not going to learn to swim just because she sees that I go swimming every day. You know, there, there are things you still have to do. And, and that's what I meant by a learning process. You kind of have to be very active and hands on. And, um, you know, do, doing all that stuff, exactly like you say, the pots, pots are burning and <laughs> things are going crazy. And unfortunately, I put some red pants into the white wash and <laughs> pink. You know, you're just trying to pull your own weight, really, in yeah. your everyday life. And um, the funny anecdotes that come out at the end. I, I think that's great. Uh, and look, you touched on what your, your typical day looks like. And, and this is a bit of a lazy question, but I kind of. I think it's nice to understand how sort of the world's best operate because to show a bit of a, a human side is kind of nice, um, you know. And, and so, what does sort of a, a, your night routine followed by your morning routine like? Because five a.m. in Spain is like one a.m. anywhere else in the world. But but take us through that typical day, like you said. Let's have a. You go to bed at what time? Um, I normally go to bed about nine thirty, nine thirty ten, probably. Um, you know, have, uh, have, have dinner or massage last thing, depending, depending on the day. Um, I, I have a physio that works, that works with me six times a week. Um, which is just something I realized that for my body type in order to keep going and, 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 and keep doing all the training that I'm doing, I, I basically need daily physio, um, and um, yeah, that kind of leads on from training, depending on if I do school pickups or not. Um, it's just really trying to to fit it all in, you know, between extra interviews and um, kind of obligations that you have. A um, couple of little businesses we're running. Um, yeah, I know. it really is. Let, let, let's talk about that. Five to nine, not a nine to five. It's a five to nine. <laughs> five to nine. <laughs> let's talk about it. You, you just glanced over it. But I, look, I've I've known you as a, you know, somebody who just loves their coffee. I don't know if it's, is it coffee time or coffee that you love? Is it just the sitting and being present or is it the actual coffee? Are you, a, what is it? No, I like my coffee. I, I, yeah. I really like coffee. I mean, I, I enjoy the the downtime as well, but I'm I'm, I'm big on yeah, the actual yeah. coffee, which is which is good and bad because you know you, you become pretty snobbish with with your coffee, and, and that <laughs> means you can't just get a brew anywhere. You know, the, the time <laughs> it takes me when I'm on the road to find a good brew, uh, a good coffee is is significant. Yeah, but then I mean, you've taken that sort of coffee, and and so you and Emma have opened up La Comuna Boutique Residence Cafe and Corner Store. Whose idea was that? Um, that was probably a shared a shared dream we've had for a very long time. I have to say it's 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 definitely more Emma's baby than mine, but um, you know I really have always enjoyed um, that Australian cafe culture and something we very dearly miss and very dearly miss, especially now because we can't travel. Um, and it's something that we've wanted to marry up with the local culture and. You know, getting in local produce, getting in um, local people, and, and and showing them basically that that there is so much more, um, you know, than just getting your whatever um, cafe on a ride. You know, that 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 food and and coffee are basically elementary to our lives, mm. and and sharing that with other people. Mm. And, and and you only opened that this year, right? Or was it last year? No, it's only a couple of months we've been open. A couple of months, yeah. And is it you know, you know what? What did you think it was going to be like, and what is it actually like owning this kind of? Well, you kind of realize, kind of you know, that it's going to be a lot more work than than <laughs> you kind of anticipated to be. But then, yeah, there are just so many little things that just take up so much time, and 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 really, yeah, trying to find a good team, which I think we've done a good job of, um, has has been totally crucial because you realize that um you really have no idea you know and and having <laughs> a, a kid who's waited all his life um come in and, and show us the skill and how to present and and how to um explain that link to the customer is is really something fascinating and something we've we've had a steep learning curve with and again just being open to learning um from from anybody is uh, kind of the the big thing I've taken away from it. 
yeah. or I am taking away from it. But, you know, despite the times here, we've still got a fair bit more restrictions and, and, and lockdowns. Um, now it's our first weekend where people can actually travel outside of their local community. So, you know, it, it really is, is only starting to, to really take off. Oh, mate, I can't wait to be there. So did you, I mean, when we were there, when I came with you and you took me down and we had that coffee in one of the, one of the coffee shops down there, are you near in the old town there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, we're just on the corner of old town. So it's, you know, it's kind of a, a good spot where we thought people could meet and, and then head for a ride. Or even if you're just passing by Girona, it's a good spot to just pull up and grab something and, and keep going. Um, and yet we're still, you know, on the cobbles of old town, which is... Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of, I think, important in terms of when you're a tourist, you know, you really want to have that old town feel, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, go, I'll put it in the show notes for everybody listening, but La Comuna residence, it's, um, you can stay there, great food, coffee, probably see you in there a bit, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm probably still my own best client. <laughs> <laughs> Goes that way. Yeah, yeah that, that's brilliant. I don't know how you fit in everything you do, mate, because... Before, before I, I in homework for this episode, I actually went down some of your sponsorship partners, and you, Felix, your manager, is doing a brilliant job. But if I have a quick rundown of some of the brands: SAP Technology, Canyon, Wahoo, Ryzen, Oakley, Alliance, Mercedes, Bahrain Endurance, Hoka, Ono, Ono, Morton, Zip, Breitling, Debu. I mean, the list. I, I'm, I'm sure I'm missing some of them. How how are you able to fit in enough time to keep everybody happy there? Um, it's it genuinely, Greg. It's, it's genuinely teamwork. Like honestly, um, you know, Felix and I we're a, we're a two man show in terms of that. Um, you know, he mm. he prepares so much. We um, he plans it. I'm actually quite an unstructured guy, as you as you know, but maybe not all the listeners know. Um, but he literally, you know, he plans it down to the minute, and I just get to show up and produce whatever it is and um then you know we we kind of balance it out as as good as we can and, and, and still trying to be loyal and trying to be as attentive to each one of our partners um is is very important because we actually call them partners and not just sponsors and you know some of those relationships are, are really really long standing um and, and new ones come about but it's definitely something that's you know uh, exciting. That's, that's that awesome. I really enjoy, and that I enjoy, that I look forward to, you know, diving in more and more to. Yeah, it, who who are some of the longest brands you've been with? Like you mentioned, you've been with some of them a long time. Is it um, Zip? Longest standing now would be Oakley. Um, oh, is that right? Yeah. Oak, Oakley, they they came on board, and I still remember the guy gave me my first pair of glasses in two thousand and five. Mm. Um, and um, the only one that was longer than that was um, was was the shoe shoe deal I had with Asics. I, I got on with them in two thousand and two, um, and then changed to Hoka last year. And um, yeah, you know, it's um, other than that, um, yeah, Zip has right. definitely been around for a long time. It's um, quite the list. It yeah, really it's is quite the list. Is there any company you kind of like to work with that you haven't got yet? <laughs> I mean, I um, well, I don't know. We probably we probably didn't mention Ryzen, which is um, no. I got them. They were, they were fourth on my list. Oh, there you go. They were, they Ryzen were, Apparel, mate. I've got Ryzen still Apparel. Work. There still you go. Work. They're, they're um, obviously super exciting because because uh, I'm one of the sort of you know n- not founding members, but then the the. Second hour, I would say, just a few months after that I was on board with them and, and actually involved with them in terms of an investment level as well. And that's kind of opened a whole new strategy that I now have with, with quite a few of the other brands as well in terms of actually being a shareholder and, and, and just makes you have so much more skin in the game and, and quite excited to you know see what impact you can have to a brand um, in terms of yeah, being an athlete, but also being an investor. Well, that's the thing. I mean, being that you you're forty later this year, and I mean, you still obviously I can just tell by the way when when, when we talk racing, you love to compete and you love to train. But you know, in saying that, you, it seems like you really you know wanting to position yourself for beyond sport. Do you have? I mean, this is a bit of a lazy thing as well to ask somebody, but you know, when you see yourself in ten years, is there kind of a where you'd like to be? kind of anything that interests you beyond the professional racing 
Um, well, I mean, there's they, they, there's plenty there, but it's it really is the question. Like, I'm still so mono focused on racing that I love the fact that there are some options coming up and there are plenty of of opportunities. But I really couldn't tell you what I feel like doing next year. So ten years <laughs> down the line really sounds like a long time. Um, I got I got asked that on somebody else's podcast uh, <laughs> two weeks ago, and I'm like, oh, I might throw that one in mine. But it really stu- it really stumbled me though. It was like, Greg, what do you want? Who, who do you see yourself in five years? I was like, uh... <laughs> yeah, it's definitely. I, I, I mean, don't know. And, and ten years from now, we'll probably have autonomous driving, and I won't even have to pick up my daughter from the nightclub. Um, <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> oh no! Oh, another man. one of those chapters well, coming up, but. <laughs> well, well, our daughters are what? What are they? Three days apart? I yeah, think. not not long. Yeah, I think Sydney and 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 Sandra, I think they're almost exact same age. So, mate, we'll we'll be doing that together if we don't have cars picking them up. You and I can trade trade shifts. Um, but I, I want to just uh, have. I've got two big questions for you. Um, so, what is one tip you have for people on just how to optimize their life? You got anything? Um, you know what? The biggest thing for me is definitely been writing stuff down like getting a little old school notebook or whatever and writing down what you want to actually achieve it's it's so simple and it's so much in terms of goal setting planning all these kinds of things but it really is something to look at it and revisit it and just kind of plant that seed in your head solidly um to to just be you know, repetition is always the key, I think, to achieving anything. And I think we talked about this in the podcast as well, that I think repetition mm-hmm. is a necessary evil for excellence in in many ways. And you're in the sports world, it's it's so obvious. You know, you go to the pool, you swim 100 laps. That's, that's just normal. Um, but in life, we often forget it, you know, and people – go to their New Year's resolution and they say, I want to achieve this, I want to do this. <laughs> and it's just so typical. They just forget it. You know, it just never happens again. Um, and that's why I'm a big fan of writing stuff down and formulating it out and then just, um, yeah, finding out what makes you tick towards that goal. That's perfect. And I just have one other question here to add to that. Uh, if you could have a Zoom call or a sit-down coffee with any living person, who would it be and why? Do you have anybody in mind? Um, I would always opt for the coffee. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, um, the Zoom call. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not so sure on the Zoom call. I had a Zoom call with Elliot Kipchoge actually a few months Did ago. You that, really? that was that was pretty cool. He's probably somebody I'd, I'd love to love to sit down with and have a coffee or, 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 or even a jog. Uh, a job for him, uh, a, a, <laughs> Sprint a, a race yeah. for me. <laughs> um, but oh. the guy, I, I love him for his humbleness and for his for yeah. his um, simplicity in life that he maintains. Yeah. That really is something that, um, yeah, I, I admire sometimes is that simplicity in life, whereas, you know, things, things seem to get a little bit complicated. Uh, yeah. Well, Ilya Kipchoge, for people that don't, he's the, you know, marathon that broke two hours for the marathon is one Basically, every marathon there is to win in these last 10 years. Incredible, incredible athlete. Um, great choice, by the way. I want to be on that coffee. Now, yeah, let's conclude yeah. with I'm going to, this is new to the show. I'm going to try something new today. 15 rapid fire questions. All right. Are you ready? Oh, geez. All right. Here we go. Does it have they're to be not, like one or answers or? No, they can be as short as you want. All right. All right. Here we go. What is your favorite family vacation? Uh, beach, beach time for sure. Any beach time. Okay, who would you dream of having a head-to-head duel in Kona with? Head-to-head duel in Kona with? I've heard you say you wanted to, that's one thing you were missing, is that head-to-head, like a Mark, Dave kind of, is there anybody that stands out? Um, you can say pass. No. <laughs> <laughs> is it arrogant to say anybody? <laughs> anybody, yeah, just anybody. Would, would somebody please step up? <laughs> no, no, such a douche thing to say. Oh my god! I'll stick to yeah. I'll stick to semi or Lionel, but I'll take okay, what I perfect. can get. Perfect. All right. Uh, what would you change about yourself if you could? Um, uh, you know what? If I don't like something, I change it. So I'm, 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 I'm you good right there. You good yeah. there? There's, yeah, you're doing all right. right. All right. What really makes you angry? 
<laughs> Being told that I'm third in the swim and I'm like, <laughs> that I came third in three disciplines and I won the race. I could have just talked about winning the race. <laughs> I like that. Anytime I'm beaten in a race. All right, here we go. Next one. Outside of triathlon, if you could choose to do anything for a day, what would it be? Professional beach volleyball player. I love Ooh. the game. Literally, I love that game. I don't know why, but I'm totally obsessed with it. I actually think you're probably more built for that than triathlon. You ever thought that maybe that was what you should have been doing? I've tried. I suck. Oh, really? I have no hand, hand or eye coordination and my balls. Yeah, no, nah, it's poor. You just like, just like the idea of having your shirt off strutting around the beach. I do, I do. And I've tried it, but um, <laughs> at the same time, just that ball just gets in the way. All right, let's move on. Which would you rather do? Wash dishes, mow the lawn, clean the bathroom, or vacuum the house? Oh, mow the lawn, 100%. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, definitely. Easy. That's an easy one. Who would you want to play you in a movie of your life? I don't know. Who, who looks good? <laughs> Leonardo. <laughs> yeah, who, Leonardo. Looks amazing, <laughs> who looks amazing is really attractive and speaks well uh, Leonardo Le- all right <laughs> Chris Hemsworth I mean he's, he's a bit bulky but you know, like. yeah but come on he's Thor yeah I agree <laughs> Thor would be pretty good he's a bit bulky but they could lean him down with cam- good camera work all right um, here's one would you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert Ooh, well, that's a fine line. I, I, I enjoy mm. being extroverted for very limited amounts of time, but generally I'm definitely more introvert. Yes, I would call you an extroverted introvert. There you go. That's what I call myself. Temporarily too. extroverted introvert. <laughs> yes, temporarily. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're getting through these. Okay, if you could join any past or current music group, which would you want to join? Ooh. Present music group. Um, I don't know. Oh gosh! I mean, you know what? I was um, I was actually looking uh, looking at that documentary, the the Bohemian Rhapsody mm-hmm. of of Queen. Queen. Yeah. I, the, I mean, the thing is, just you realize, like these guys, the life they live, guys and girls. It's it's. Oof. It's not really more something to be envied, you know. No, Gen- no. Generally, yeah, I suck after ten PM, and which is when they <laughs> when they get going, and and yeah, I'm not sure. I don't want to be in a music group. I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> is there a morning concert group? <laughs> That's fantastic. I like that. I I think I'm the same. <laughs> All right, next one. Okay, myself not included. Who is the most intelligent person you know? <laughs> you, Greg Bennett. For sure. <laughs> no, myself not included. You can't have me. No, uh, my father actually. My father. Oh, that's he's, he's he's outrageously smart. That's awesome. If you could describe yourself as an animal, which one would it be? An animal, probably. Um. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I know because if you go a lion, then you sound like you're arrogant, and then if you go a dolphin, then you sound like you're all like you know. It's hard to pick, isn't it? Yeah, I would have probably picked more. Uh, I don't know, like an antelope or something. You know, something that just oh. keeps keeps going, keeps oh, going, well and just like it's it, not it's not it's not that good at anything. But it just, <laughs> just keeps going, just keeps trucking on. You know? I love that. An antelope listening, going, "Hang on, <laughs> but that's I'm pretty good at no, stuff." No, no. <laughs> but that's the thing, though. You look at it, and and this whole discussion about the whole sub seven hour, which we didn't, yeah. which we didn't get into, and we oh, probably shouldn't get into. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, might need another beer or two for that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But they analyze the current world records, and then they analyze the current like top five or top ten performances in each discipline. I have none of them. None of them. No, no, no. Oh, that's what I mean. No. Like, not great at anything, but put it together and kind of, you know, I keep trucking on. You, you know, I have that um, little side note. When, when you know, our federations these days say, look, if you can swim this fast, bike this fast, and run this fast, we'll put you on the mm-hmm. whatever, the, the ABC program. Yeah. In my career, even when I was sort of near the peak of my career, I didn't have any of the splits. No. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have made the federation. No. See, you made see, a good I did, career of it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, made a good career of just being like, I'm a bit like you, I guess. You kind of go, yeah, people told you you're kind of average the whole time. You're like, well, screw you. Um, Let's move on because I know your time's limited here. Um, Oh, here's a good one. Do you think the Olympics will go ahead in 2021? Oh, 
tough question. I mean, I know they're really pushing for it. Mm. Um, I think it will, but without a crowd. What do you? I don't yeah, know. I mean, they've banned the crowds. So they just banned them today, I believe. They just oh, said did they really? no, no, no international to spectators. Um, and I really, really hope for all those, you know, of course. girls and guys who are wanting to live their dream that it goes ahead. Mm-hmm. All right, three to go. Most recent book you've read? Um, Players, um, which uh, I, I, I've actually forgotten the author. It's about how sports marketing and commercialization became what it is today and where sports started in like the 30s and 40s and 50s in terms of every major sport like the ATP and and um, the NHL and, and all those kind of things. Um, interesting book if you enjoy sports and, and, and sports marketing to see where all the changes happened in various federations and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Very sports geeky, but yeah, I like it. No, I like that. I mean, especially with the whole PTO being set up, the Professional Triathlete Organization. And yeah, it's sort of what they're basing themselves off. I think their theory is yeah. based on that. Um, it was actually given to me by, by Sam Renouf from the oh, PTO. Yeah. yeah. Sam Renouf is the CEO of the PTO, um, for people that don't know. Okay, most recent show you watched on Netflix? Um, Lupin, Lupin. Uh, great show. Love it. It's a French, original French show about uh, uh, a very, a gentleman thief, they call him. Um, okay. And they've only got five episodes out so far, but fantastic. Loved it. Cool. And uh, finally, <clears throat> if you won $100 million in the lottery, how would you spend it? Oof. Oh, geez, what would I do? I mean, you're a charitable person, so. Yeah, definitely. I'd, I'd definitely uh, uh, put, a, put a large bit to charity um, and, and, and do some not so dusty charity projects. I feel like a lot of charity project, projects are quite dusty and, and could do with a little bit of young inspiration. For sure, I would do that. Um, I also wouldn't call myself Mother Teresa. I'd also buy myself a nice beach house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'd, I'd lavish myself in fine satin. <laughs> no, I don't care about satin. I just want a house on the beach, <laughs> have a couple of surfboards and a stand-up paddleboard and just you know, yeah, uh, yeah. enjoy the sunsets. That's awesome. Mate, well, with 100 million, I think you get a fair, fair few of those. You can probably shift one my way as well if you want. <laughs> I, I, I think about it. You know, look, I, I want to have some friends around. And if yeah, you choose right, your neighbors, right. I mean, why not? <laughs> uh, yeah, and mate, this has been absolutely really great. I know we kind of went everywhere and every which direction, but I know you got a lot on, and this is just a huge thrill. I'm calling this the Jan Fredino Special Edition. Um, you know, to come on my show again has just been really fun, mate. So thank you so much. Absolutely, mate. It's been a real pleasure. Have a chat. Yeah. And um, yeah. all my regards to the family and I hope to chat uh, very soon. Yeah, yeah. And to yours as well, say hi to Emma for us and everybody else for listening. Thank you so much. And um, you can find all the show notes, timestamps, links, and all of that at bennettendurance.com forward slash media. All right. Thanks again, Jan. Stay on the line, mate. Cheers. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed part two of this conversation with Jan Fredino. So thanks you all for listening. Uh, if you want to support what I'm doing, you can visit my Patreon page, The Greg Bennett Show at patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. And you can give as much or as little as you want um, and you can end it whenever you like. I really appreciate any support. It just helps me keep doing what I'm doing here. Thanks again for your support. Stay consistent and endure just one moment longer. Thanks a lot for listening. If you enjoyed the show, your support would truly be appreciated. You can visit the Patreon page or you can subscribe with your podcast app of choice. Don't miss the next episode, so subscribe and be notified. For show notes, if you want to know more, please visit bennettendurance.com. I'm Phil Liggett, and on behalf of Greg Bennett, here's to the next time, and I hope you will join Greg again very soon.